All right, it's me again. July 5th, about half past six in the evening. And I'm um, having anxiety again. It just seems to be more of a regular occurrence again in these past couple of weeks. I just, when I find myself here at home alone for long stretches of time, I just find myself with anxiety. I just I feel lonely with no one to talk to. I mean, yes, I know there's Nick and there's Kim, but <coughs> I can't. I can't keep pestering them all the time. <coughs> Every time I need someone to talk to. <coughs> It's like, it's like I'm expecting them to babysit me all the time and I'm not, I don't want that to happen. It's like I'm expecting people to babysit me all the time. It's not like that at all. It's not like that at all. I just have this, every now and then, and recent, in recent times, it's becoming even more regular. Um, I just have this feeling, this anxiety feeling. It feels like this overwhelming paralysis of, I don't know, just... I'm alone. I'm alone. And what happens if during this time when I'm alone, my body fails me and I can't get the help that I need? What happens? Like, um, the other week, the other week when I fell out of bed, all right, I was here at home alone in the middle of the night, half past two in the morning, and I fell out of bed. I was alone. I couldn't reach my phone to call for an ambulance, and, but I could reach my iPad. Luckily, and my iPad was, and was hooked up to the internet, thank God. The internet was switched on and my iPad was hooked up, so thank God. I managed to Skype a friend of mine and get her to call the ambulance for me. However, I was in the bedroom, on the floor in the bedroom. I left my keys out here in the bedroom. I could not use the clicker to open the door. They had to um, call for the fire department to come and break the door down. To, to get in, to get me. And so for a few days, my apartment was unsecured, properly unsecured. And the door was essentially um, not um, functional. So I had to call the Department of Housing. And that took a couple of days to rectify that. And that, I'm scared of something like that happening again. While I was there on the floor, 
I was in pain. I had not severely injured myself. Thank, thank God for that. But um, I was very uncomfortable. And the effort that it would have taken me by myself to get up off the floor and back in the bed would have been excruciating. Because I would have put, probably had to put all my weight on my shins, on my knees, and push myself up. As it was, it was excruciating. Having the help of the ambos, that was excruciating enough. Add that to the fact that I was, I've just recently been diagnosed with quite severe neuralgia. which, as you know, is um, a condition typified by uh, pain sensitivity. Mm. So I have a very low pain threshold. It's very easy for me to get headaches and um, my fingertips, my fingertips, painful. So, I sometimes need to talk through my anxiety, even if it is doing this with my mom, because sometimes just hearing that sound of someone talking helps even if it is just myself. What I really want is for a, a Skype network of people who, like me, suffer from depression, anxiety, agoraphobia, You know, that sort of thing, those sorts of things. If you can regularly talk to each other and provide that companionship when we need it the most. <coughs> That's what I want to ultimately <coughs> set up. <coughs> and also... I want to um, prov help provide more incentives for GPs to make house calls to housebound patients. Because for, for, uh, there are a lot of people like me who find it difficult going out because of body problems. And surely I'm not the only one. Surely I'm not the only one. Which is why I'm asking people, please help me to lobby the government. Help me to lobby the government to change these rules. Make it easier for GPs. Make it more attractive for GPs to make house calls to patients who find it difficult to get out. Housebound patients who are you know, disabled, frail, agoraphobic, depression, who can't go out for whatever reason. It's not about, it's not about, uh, it's not about a patient who is too lazy to meet an appointment with their GP. It's about a patient who genuinely feels anxiety every time they go out. Genuinely feels heightened anxiety.
whenever they go out. Even if it is to a doctor's appointment. Because when a person is suffering heightened anxiety, how can they possibly seek the fullest treatment they can possibly get from their GP if they're too worried about their anxiety? I can't. If you're sitting there in your GP's office too anxious and anxiety ridden to worry about anything else, how are you expected to to explain to your doctor what else is this? How can you expect your doctor to treat you? <clears throat> you can't. You need to be able to be in a comfortable environment, even if it is at home. So please, I urge you, talk to your 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 representative, your government representative at state and federal level, your health, state health department, um, and federal health department, to make it easier for GPs <coughs> to make house calls. Gone are the days when doctors made house calls. Gone are the days when patients were treated in the home. <clears throat> it's too sterile now. It's too sterile. I am one of those patients that slip through the cracks. Some services I'm too young for, some services I'm too old for. Because I'm now in my mid-30s. Alright? I'm 35. Some, some services I'm too young for, some services I'm too old for. Some services I aged out of 10, 15 years ago. And I'm now too old for. Some services I'm too young for. And I've got to wait another 20, 30, 40, 50 years. By which time, God knows I could be dead by then. So, you know, there has to be something that meets in the middle. Where someone who is my age, with my conditions, or similar to that, those conditions, can receive the support they need. But no, there's nothing. There is nothing. There is a short term, maybe, <clears throat> short term temporary solutions. But nothing long term. Nothing long term. So please lobby your government. Speak to your local, um, your state representative for the electorate that you live in your federal electorate representative and the health department in the state that you live in. The health minister of the state that you live in. <clears throat> you never know, that might actually be the same person. But, um, yeah. Lobby your state and federal governments. Make it easier for GPs. Make it more attractive for GPs. Because I spoke with my GP today, and he outright admitted to me the only way that he would be willing to make a house call to a patient is if that patient was dying. I, he practically admitted to me that the only way he would make a house call to me is if I was on my deathbed. And I'm about to croak any minute. What's the point of that then? Please help your fellow Australians.